Everybody, welcome to Legacy TV and a Convo Podcast. And today, I got a very special guest. I've been trying to get my brother here since I found out he's out and doing good. And I'm going to tell you guys a little story before I, I tell you who he is because I want you guys to take it back to when I used to get in trouble and remember those days. And I was going to probation office and I was checking in. I had to go there every week. I had to take piss tests. They were coming in and out of my house, waking me and my kids up at 6 in the morning and running through my clothes and, and checking all my shit to see if I got anything. And uh, one day I'm at the probation office. And you guys know I'm a fourth-degree jiu-jitsu black belt. I've been doing jiu-jitsu for 19 years and mixed martial arts with my master, Joe Morera. And uh, shout-out to Joe. And I'm sitting down waiting for my turn and... I look over and look who I see. It's motherfucking man, Jason Mayhem Miller. Like, if you guys don't know, go do some fucking research in MMA and look back at this guy's career. He's done it all, fought everybody, trained with the best. He was on the Ultimate Fighter reality show. He's uh, He's been the bully beatdown host. I mean, he's done it all in his career. It's, it's an amazing career. I think it gets overlooked. And as I'm sitting there watching Jason come to probation, I'm thinking to myself, "Damn, why? Why is he here?" I'm like, "What the fuck? Well, I'm I'm the I'm the fuck up. But he's not supposed to be here." And then uh, I remember I I did my my drug test and all that, and and I left. And as I'm walking out, I, I see Jason walking up the street, and I'm like, "Man, I'm, I'm gonna go get in my car real quick and go see if he needs a ride and shit." And so I jumped in my car and I drove over, and I was like, "Jason, hey, bro, you need a ride?" And Jason was like, "Hell yeah!" He's like, "I gave you a ride to the CVS," and I, I was telling Jason about all my rap music and trying to hype Jason up, and gave him my CD that day, and uh, I was like, "Man, bro, can I get a picture with you before you left?" We took a picture by the CVS, man, and that was the last I, I saw of you, bro. Yeah, yeah. bud. That was, uh, I think I was on uh, three years of probation for like 10 years. For 10 years? <laughs> yeah. It's the never-ending fucking probation when you're on it. If you, I mean, look, if you fuck up, if you keep fucking up, they, they keep you on it. Like, that's a weird, uh, you know, you never see that in the fine print, but that's what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah the reality. But yeah, you know, I wanted to come on your show because, you know, I see you doing good, and it, it feels like you're getting something uh, going here, and I wanted to, you know, Come and uh, put a little mayhem, sprinkle some magic on Let's it. Let's go. And, uh, you know, I, 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 this is dope, man. It's dope to see that uh, we both come far away from this uh, <laughs> nightmare of uh, POs and, you know, them knocking on your door at 7 a.m. and uh, flipping your whole house. Uh, I, I'm glad that uh, we're doing better now. Absolutely, brother. And now we're dressed like the soldiers of fortune. And guys, we did not do for this shit. Hire, on, baby. We, did, didn't, we didn't do this shit on oh, purpose fuck. either. It's, just, I, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, let's get dressed up like our, we're cosplaying as army men today. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're good. But yeah, this is the this is the guy. This is the real the guy that you guys love. This is this is the character that you guys love. And that's like immediately when I when I ran into him, I was like, man, this guy's such a cool dude, such a down to earth dude, just a regular dude like me. You know, he doesn't act like he's too cool for anybody, and and he never did. And and bro, so like the crazy thing about it is like you know going through that probation process. I don't know what happened to you afterwards. I I know I know you. Okay, I, so. Now I'm thinking about it. You're taking me back to yeah. the old OC Yeah, because days. I, I, I know a lot of people know your story as far as fighting goes. Your career is, I mean, maybe not these newer cats. and No, no, the young generation, they don't really understand. I, I think that the guys who are the champions today and the, uh, you know. It, the I who's kinda, who. The who's who now yeah. were the Mayhem fans 100%. of that day. And it's weird for me to, you know, because I still feel pretty young. You know what I mean? Like, uh, But the fight business but you get old quick and so i'm i'm thinking now i'm realizing how important because you know after i lost my last fight like uh my last ufc fight blew my knee out ufc didn't pay for that knee surgery so it was like i was very like pissed off which and is disillusioned. Yeah, that's that's business you know my but, opinion um, he didn't say it i did that, like uh <laughs> the um i was kind of disillusioned by by mixed martial arts a little bit because you know the the way it you know the glory had kind of faded and i went through this phase of being like very kind of pissed off at the world a little bit and i guess that's like a normal thing that that happens to athletes when you're you know you fell out of your usefulness as far as you know uh, being an active fighter but then as the years went by i realized that the guys who were who are were influenced by me 
as a kid are now like the big, sh- you know, everyone's coloring their hair. Yeah. Everyone, yeah. You know, all that stuff that yeah. I was like, everyone's dancing on the way out. Yeah. You know, it, it's like one of those things I'm, I'm very thankful for. And it's one of those, um, if you love mixed martial arts, you know, you love you're, you're paying it. You're well, no, but you're paying, you're paying for to the future. Those little kids that have that big dream. Let's be honest, too, bro. Like, you weren't just an ordinary, like, mixed martial arts fighter, bro, because you had, like, such a, like, a big character, and people embraced you so much. But now that's the the standard. Like, nobody nobody gets paid unless they're showing out. Unless Unless they they know how to talk at the press conference, (laughs) unless they know how to tweet, unless they know how to, you know, nobody's really getting paid unless they have a nice story and a character, and they're, they're really, you know, I I remember when Dana and them took over the UFC, they they kind of were trying to homogenize it where it's mixed martial arts was they were trying to make it exactly like boxing, where it's very standardized and now the kids are rebelling. Like the guys who are doing it and it's working for the UFC to make more money. You know, uh O'Malley is all, you know, fired up with the crazy hair with and the pink hair yeah, and the six nine tattoo. God, he's, Why, you know, man, he's, fuck. He's, what, what? What's the matter with six nine tattoo? <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I just I oh, because of Takashi. I just yeah. snitchy Takashi. I, I, oh, I know. Man. Yeah. Listen, you don't, you don't talk that around us. Okay. Ah, sorry, uh, man. Yeah. I can't. I can't be a part of that. All okay, right. Well, yeah, ahead. I get it, but you know, <laughs> I but I get it, it though. It's that, a whole. But that's zone. the younger generation. They're they're about that. They're about this. Uh, you know, different. The, the, I get it. I the get way it. I was, I'm I, down. the way I was raised was you. Did, you, you got yourself in that shit. Mm. You, you stick it out. You don't tell on your friends. <laughs> you know what I mean? But hey, uh, go ahead. Six no, nine tattoo. I, I, I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, no. I, I was just like kind of uh, you know toot my own horn. But about he's fucking good. Being, though, bro. being ahead of the game. Oh, he's he's great. Oh, yeah. we're gonna talk MMA this quick. Let's do it. Uh, L- a little bit. Just about uh, since that, we, we that, talked that about that fight just happened. Yeah. O'Malley. Yeah, he's fresh in my head because man, he. Here's the weird move that he's making, though. Why on earth, if you're just so dominant at your well, bantam weight, right? Bantam weight, yep. He's so dominant at this weight class. Nobody can really mess with him. His his conditioning is far superior than everyone else's. His power is there, but you don't need to be like a super like his power for that weight class is is okay. up there. He's very is good, up yeah. there. Why on earth? I don't know. He, you know what? He's very brave. I'll yeah. tell you that. Because to go up a weight class against a power puncher who's powerful for like maybe Ilya? for maybe yeah. one seventy, <laughs> that guy punches. That hard. guy's nasty. Bro. Punches hard, fast <laughs> combinations, yeah. and I I really I don't know. I, you know, in my like I I want O'Malley to win. Yeah. I'm like a big fan. Yeah, I think he's you know he's very stylistically like super fun to watch. Yeah, he's creative. You know, he makes all these moves, but for him to go up to this weight. And fight a 155er who's just, you know, got this momentum. Yeah. Man, and you know what? That's brave. That's Straight super killer. brave. Yeah. Yeah. It's really I, brave. I'm a fan of Cheeto too. And and shout out to Cheeto and, and, and Cheeto's G- a grinder. And, like and, and Jason Cheeto is Perillo. this kind of guy that's a grinder, like that is a goes forward and like durable. So like you can see that Cheeto really should be walking around at about 190 pounds. Like he should he's like a big goon. Yeah. Yeah. So it's super hard. Like, how are you going to knock this guy out at, at bantamweight? I don't know. Nobody, you know, yeah, I, 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 he's tough. It's funny. It's because my, uh, my my son and my daughter went to school with his daughter. And yeah. I, I ran to him. I'm like, this guy fights at bantamweight? Like, You'd be surprised. He's when he's, yeah, yeah he's like uh, caveman <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. yeah. yeah pretty tough. <laughs> but I, I thought it was a great fight. And I, I right? He fought to the fucking... Yeah, he bought the finish. You know what he, I mean? he came alive. And he caught him at four. the end with that body shot. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, he hit him five. good with that one. He hit him with that good. <laughs> well, but I think, you know, uh, O'Malley was taking his foot off the brake. I mean, a foot off the gas a little bit. You know what I mean? Because he was like, ah, oh, I got this. I won. And he, like, kind of let his belly relax. And that when guy was, hit him with the banger. What I was kind of tripping off uh, on that fight is I, I think people have tried to take uh, O'Malley down, but it doesn't look like they, they set it up right. And he's got a real good does a real good job of keeping the distance with with his punches to keep guys from getting into the legs it's or getting angles. into body locks. It's yeah, about angles. He does Strange a very angles. good very good job at that. And because, he sw- because he's an unconventional yeah. exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. he's an unconventional fighter where he fight he strikes from strange angles and he does like uh interest like a lot of knees and a lot of you know, he does elbows from close range and he and he switches stances and 
breaks direction. Yeah. Like yeah. That, he he's very unpredictable. Um, completely. And what ha- and the other thing is, yeah, take him down. But again, it's Bantam weights. Yep. And he's like a big framed guy. Yep. Who again Wrong. if he just ate and lifted weights, this guy would be two hundred pounds. Yeah, you he's know? still very he, young. He's too. a really and he's young, strong. Yeah. And so yeah, you take him down. But he's got enough cardio to get back up. Or at least defend get himself the, down there. Yep. Let the fight. And he knows jujitsu. You know, it's not like uh he he's not like world class jujitsu, maybe, but I mean maybe he is. I haven't we haven't seen an I haven't, because I haven't watched all his fights. Yeah. I've been down here and there. Yeah. So I haven't got to witness his whole career all the way through. But you know, from the fights that I've seen, this guy is his angles are really sharp and he breaks off t- to do a different direction every once in a while. So that you can't really get a beat on him. So yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I think that uh, Topuria is this is how you yeah, say his name? Ilya Topuria. Yeah, yeah. Topuria. Uh, I I believe that this guy is a bad matchup because really the times that you can even see it in the Cheeto fight that the times that Cheeto was successful was when he pushed him near the cage and came with combinations, or, or O'Malley would stay in the pocket yeah. and and fire uh, back because the combinations would land. And I think that just Toporia's style, the way that he jumps in and does like rapid fire combinations, combinations yeah. this could be a big problem for Absolutely. him. Absolutely. You know? So yeah. if that fight ever comes to pass, like right now we're talking hypotheticals because you know they, they haven't even said anything about it. Yeah, he called him out, but you know th- that was just this past weekend. Yeah. Everybody might forget about that. Yeah. It were great fights though, but let's 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 get back to what we were, we were talking about. So that, oh, talking about me, yes, I love talking this is about what, me because I know this is what the people really want to hear. So as this was eight, about eight years ago, as I as I remember correctly, I, I, if you haven't well, seen, well, see, you know what's funny is right after that. Okay, it's funny that I went to CVS. Uh, it's fun. It, Don't tell me you got in trouble right after that. No, like <laughs> okay, right I, the 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 woman that I was uh, dating at the time was into all kinds of stuff that I was not into into and didn't know about. So they kicked the door right after this, the, right, right after I met you, like the cops just kicked the door. So you went home with, went with the looking girl? for, yeah, I went back to that, to, yeah, to her, they kicked the door on her crimes, but because I was on probation, they went through the whole house. Like, you know, they yeah, do. Yep. And then busted me for a bulletproof vest, some nunchucks, and a ninja sword. Oh, my God. Yeah. So I don't know if I was going to overthrow the government with this equipment or something, but they oh got me. And, I, you God. know, I thought that bulletproof vest was a weight vest. I was running in it. You know what I mean? I didn't even understand what I had. They just, you know, they, they got me. They got me on that. I, so. feel like, I feel like when you... F- from when you first got in trouble in Orange County, they were always on you, bro. Like they Listen, were always. I, it's my mistake. Yes, okay. that's well, here, true. Here's, too, here's what's up. But here. it, a little bit of it is them watching you no, all the time. No, buddy. Listen. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> it, it goes. It cuts both ways. Yeah. Okay. Because of my personality, and especially drinking, smoking, eating pills, having oh, okay, like, so, so so going crazy. I'll, I'll just be straight up with you. Like I was just on one. What pills? I was on what pills? What like this t- one? Take that one day. A upper, a downer, a sidewayser. This girl was super <laughs> into <laughs> drugs, bro. She was into drugs, so I was into drugs. Like you know, okay, and yeah. if that's bad, that's bad because drugs, like, it's like it's I'm putting my here. I'm putting my accountability. Man, drugs no. is a big word. Oh, what, no. what drugs? I never got into street drugs like uh, speed or anything like this. Yeah, I did. But, I, I did that when I was younger. Yeah, and but but I got it. Definitely got into. I definitely got into these kind of. Uh, uh, CVS speed. Oh shit! Buddy. Like you know what I mean? Like it was yeah. just like, oh okay. So yeah. lawyers are taking this. Uh, so let me tell. Make you smarter, buddy. You put all maybe that one by itself, but then you put a little chronic on there. You put a little <laughs> fucking liquor in there. You put a little, you know, and it's, it a, just, it's a cocktail. I just it just obliterated yeah. my life. Yeah. Like obliterate. Yeah. And, and I'll just be honest. Like I, I'm at a place where I can talk about it openly yeah. because hopefully I can convince somebody out there not to do it to like okay check yourself before yeah, you wreck yeah, yourself yeah, 100%. because to me uh you know I, I i was stuck in that zone of you know um life that party. this is how life is yeah this is how life is and i had so much people around me that were yo let's party and then 
you know, you can keep partying. You can you can keep it going. Well, who doesn't want to fucking party with fucking Jason but, Mayhem? May, nah, but everybody loved <laughs> Mayhem <laughs> until they don't. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But the thing was, okay, now now back to that. Now, I take total accountability for my actions. Like, I, I, was, I, I made a lot of mistakes. But the thing was is that uh, my whole life has been uh, I need an enemy. I need a uh, opponent. So, and I like how the kids are saying ops now, because I always had the ops. Like, op, I was like, yeah. yeah. And, on, <laughs> you know, as as my fight career winded down, I had no opponent and no team to fight against and no match. But then the cops showed up. And, you know, they, I will say, yeah, I, I made mistakes. Now, let me but ask they you, also, let, let me ask they're you. also a team that wants to win. Yes. So they went out of their way to overcharge. To, you know what I mean? To make sure to be around my house on a Friday night, Saturday night. And, oh, oh, we heard something. So they just bust in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, like, I get it. The cops, they're trying, they, in their mind, they're the heroes and they want to say, but, uh, you know, I felt like they were overstepping. Yes. Again, I was deep in them drugs. I was deep in the weed. I was deep in that. I was deep in all that. So, I, in my mind, I like, they're my opponents now. Yeah. And I, on site as soon as i saw them i would pop off to them yeah why Fuck you why and why trip out and so shit i would them, i would makes, get in trouble which only makes shit worse guys like when you really do that well you, you know it. it's like a i don't know i i don't want to say that i guess i i'm gotten smarter about it i i just felt like they were overstepping their they authority were, they, they were, were going i mean and they do they, it's it's but what that's they the do. that's the game yeah you know, young uh, young guys or or even not even young guys i meet guys who are still in that prison mindset that have this, uh, you know, very um, callous opinion towards uh, law enforcement and uh, view them as their enemy. And I get it. Yeah, I get it when you're in the when you get caught up in the system. But, but really, the big problem was, was that okay? So they would uh, jam me up for, you know, sometimes minor, sometimes major incidents, <sighs> then um, just throw me in a box and just make me suffer. Yeah. So that the minute that I got out, I wanted a beer, I wanted some weed, and you know, there was no that, help. That's a personal failing, like that. That the mindset, but I I didn't have any guidance out of this. So for me, I would like to see a world in which, okay, the guy is screwing up. You take him to jail, yeah, but don't dehumanize him and put him in a box and make him do nothing except hang out with other scumbags yeah. you know what i'm saying and i you know i'm dehumanizing us yeah but like you know if you ride that merry-go-round it, it makes sense i mean there was a time i think i got busted on a friday bailed out on a saturday and was back in by sunday <laughs> like that happened bro you're not the that only happened one. that happened a lot of people do that because you know that you you going to jail for one night is traumatizing for, absolutely for anybody absolutely but to like get, keep getting stuck in there, the trauma comes back. And what do you do when you trauma? If you're used to getting drunk right after a trauma, you go back around, and then then they're they're on you're on the radar. So they pick you up again. Yep. And it's just they like that game. You know what I mean? That it's fun for them. It's more money for them. But they get to cosplay as you know soldiers <laughs> like us. And uh, you know what I mean? With tack belts and weaponry and modern warfare skins. Yeah. And they just get down. You know what I mean? <laughs> so they love it, bro. They love it. The guy's in the helicopter hanging out like he's in Vietnam. I hide behind the bush. I yeah, see but they're on the roof with a sniper rifle. <laughs> Buddy, it, it's, it's tough, man. It's tougher than Von Dell. Yeah, I can imagine they get a kick out of that shit, man. And just putting and, the, and listen, the, bud. If look at us, we're just dressed up like this, and it's like a Wednesday. Uh, imagine us with some ma machine guns. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You would play the part, right? Yeah, you know the. I think the, the main thing is you. You were caught in a cycle, and I and I believe the two really do go together. It's uh, the females and the drugs. Like they kind of go together, and when you get caught in that cycle, especially with the girl. Or girls that do. Well, if drugs. you have, yeah, if you have somebody who is uh, <laughs> validating your yeah. lifestyle, and and it's fun, it's yeah. fun. Like you guys are doing like weird missions, and you know, uh, the biggest drug, deal, the biggest dope dealer I know is CVS. Yeah, that's it. Like yeah. uh, you know what I mean. And there's a bunch of doctors out there to just 
Yeah. And they're making money. They're just like driving the best cars. They got the best everything. And like all they do, you know what I mean? Just tick, 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 write yeah. a thing and there you go. And it, it's very interesting with it. This is where, you know, we are in America. Uh, uh, all these poor kids dying off fentanyl and whatnot, you know. I, I, I guess I, I, yeah. I had an experience like that before I quit. And this was right before I did the one of the last times I did time as, as I, when I was younger. And I, I had been I had been smoking speed. And, dude, I was in a CVS, actually. And I remember all of a sudden everything started spinning and I couldn't breathe. And I kept try, I kept trying to take deep breaths and like it got smaller and smaller. And I, I thought I had somebody had poisoned me. And so I called my pops and I told my pops, I said, Dad, I, I think I'm dying. Mm. And, he, and he's like, what's wrong with you? And he's I, I'm like, I, each time I take a breath, it's getting smaller. I can't breathe. I feel like my heart's beating real fast. And so, <clears throat> dude, I, it started spinning. He's like, where are you? My dad came and he got me and he drove me to my doctor's office and I was I started thinking my the doctor was trying to kill me. Yeah. And then the, they called the ambulance. The ambulance like put me inside the ambulance. They like strapped me in. And I was trying yeah, to get it. Dude, I was I was paranoid as fuck. I thought everyone was out to get me and I remember that experience. After that I went straight to to do three I violated probation because I was on on meth. I did 3 months. I remember looking at myself in that in those fucking foggy ass mirror with the jumpsuit up with the orange county shit on again and I'm I'm looking at myself like dude, you're that same guy that you watch go in and out while you were just doing I cuz I did a year before that. And you know, I'm I'm watching, you know, these guys get out, come in. Get out, come in. I'm like, dude, what's what the fuck is wrong with you? Don't you want to go home and be with your family? Why the fuck you keep on coming in here? So that after that, that that was it for me, bro. And and I really did change my life, and that's when I started putting my see. C, my see, CDs. that's beautiful that you had less weird like jailhouse like come to Jesus moment. But like for me, like that didn't, didn't happen. That didn't, <laughs> didn't happen. Like I was like so like I could keep angry in there and like keep uh, sloughing off that accountability to the cops did this or that was the girl's fault or that was their fault. And I'm curious. Until, until I rolled around on my own and like kind of clicked and I like made an Instagram, like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I leave the Instagram posts up the psycho ones of me all fucked up. And yeah. like, do I, I just, I, I'm not going to delete them and no. scrub them because I, I want people to kind of be able to look back like, Whoa, man, yes. this is what it looks like when, and maybe identify in themselves yep. that what, what happens when you go down this road right and you know and to see how it can how you can change how you can turn that negative cycle into something once positive. once i like you know maybe for you it was in that dirty mirror for me it was like uh on the outside when i realized that i was doing this to myself i was doing this to my i was alienating everybody and going away because i was being so selfish i wanted to like feel so good and and you know i remember like there was a point where i felt so good like so like oh my god this is so good drinking and this and this and this and and i i said to myself man you know you, you're not supposed to feel this good all at one time good feeling is supposed to be stretched out yeah. over a long time you're supposed to like build good relationships with friends you're not supposed to like cut everyone off so you can just have all the happiness to yourself you're supposed to spread the happiness around you're supposed to like bring happiness for years it's supposed to go on and that's one of the things that clicked in my head and i and look and i still wasn't sober at that point i still yeah. wasn't quitting everything yet like I, but I, that thought came in my mind so that I could make the next steps, go to rehab. You know what I mean? I, it would have been easy for me to get violated, go to jail, and just get out and just go back to that crazy life. This, this last I had enough money to go to start back this life, yeah. like where you can just have fun all the have fun all the time. But I realized like this is not a viable long term solution. Like this is not what you want to do with your life. You know, you want to build like good friends you want to help all your homies come up yeah 100%. now speaking of samu manuka s-a-m-u manuka.com <laughs> slash mayhem 
uh, sponsor for the podcast today. B and Flow is their latest product. Oh my God, it's delightful. Tastes so good. Hey, there's antibiotic properties in here. I heard it cures cancer, but that's not, I mean, can't say that legally. But, you know, it's some kind of magic. SamuManuka.com backslash mayhem. And I'll personally give you a thank you note. Absolutely. Right. Check it out. And I literally, I just had an emergency podcast, which is coming out on March uh, 14th. Uh, with my brother Gary Heyer, who actually just found out he has brain and neck cancer. Oh shit! Maybe yeah. smear some manuka on it. Yeah, Damn. we're gonna we're gonna definitely try and let him know about that, man. But yeah, bro. So I'm, I, I listen. I, I don't know. I hope God. I'll pray for him. God bless. God bless. Uh, him. I like. Yeah, I make jokes, but damn, that's yeah, that's, yeah. that's 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 heavy, yeah, man. Dude. Crazy. It, it, it reminds brain you. Brain cancer. Brain and neck cancer. He and he already beat stage four uh, colorectal cancer. Oh my goodness, bud! Yeah. I, I hope a, to God he has a, the bag here and. Now, you know, he and all he does every day is fight for p- other people facing cancer. And he has a company called Higher Power Wellness, and his whole life is dedicated to kind of help and spread cancer awareness and help people that are suffering. And, and uh, yeah, he's made products and all that, too. I mean, Good is there dude. anybody who's not aware of it yet? Well, I'm pretty it's sure. Such a everyone, bummer. Yeah, yeah. Such it's, a it's bummer, fucking man. Fucking crazy. Man. Like, we've defeated, like, every damn, ugh, every yeah. damn disease in the world, but this one still catches us. Oh. Yeah, and the and another disease is our our people going in and out of jails. And Jason, tell me, like, what was like, what was OCJ like for you, dog? Like, serious shit. Like, because I know what it was oh, like man. for me. I got on some thunder. I got on some riots in there. I had some fucking crazy yeah. fights. Like, you come in there. Everybody left me be. Uh, everybody <laughs> left. Everybody left me be, which I was happy about. Where did you go mainly to Theo Lacey? Uh, Lacey, yeah. yeah that Lacey where, is like know. the high profile celebrity. Uh, Theo rig. Lacey, Orange County is worse. Yeah, it's, it's fucking shithole. But I mean, no, it's weird because it's like the cleanest like facility. Like you feel like you're at a hospital sort of, <laughs> but it's such a nightmare, like yeah, uh, yeah. A, a, a sterile. So you didn't get into yeah. any scraps in, in not, in not in Orange in County? Prison t- in prison. So this last time, let's let's get to, let's bring it up to date. So this last time you end up going to jail, you, you get two years. Am I, am I right? Mm, yeah. For, and, I, and well, I got four years. Four uh, years with half? That served, yeah, served two, got good behavior. Like I did all the right, you know what I mean? I was like a model prisoner. And what like prison that. did you end up going to? Chino. Chino. Yeah. Oh shit. There we go. Yeah. So yeah, it big was boy, like, big boy prison. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, it was a, it was a matter of time, you know, if I, I, I did, I couldn't reset my brain to say, Hey bud, uh, maybe this liquor is uh, screwing you up. You know, maybe you need to take a step back from this. You're becoming your uncle Bill. And uh, I- old Bill was like, madman who's just getting brawls with everybody all the time drink whiskey and knock out the cops and, <laughs> you know what i mean i i i don't know i didn't want to i don't want to go that route no like, uh, you no know, hell no and i'll so, tell you i'll tell you something real quick as before we get into the prison part is and i think you'd be proud is for a long time i battled alcoholism even after i got out of jail and got off probation i would drink for in excess for no reason i started feeling some pain in my liver nine months ago i quit drinking alcohol long story short I had some pain recently. I went and got checked up, did the CT scans. They said I had a, a enlarged liver. Mm. And then they did the, I mean, they did the ultrasound that came back like that. Then they sent me for the CT scans. The dude said, dude, you got a second chance. You're lucky you quit drinking. Your liver looks like it's healing. Mm. And that's why it's enlarged. So, man, yeah, I quit drinking. And, bro, I'm telling you, it's been the best fucking decision i made in my life and, and, weird. And, 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 I'll, and i'll say that to anybody i'm never gonna be like in the room telling people hey don't drink but for me this last nine months of my life eight and a half nine months has been the best and the most productive of my life i've gotten more shit done than i ever have yeah. it's strange it's strange what happens like when you give that up yeah it's, it's a trip well, but bro. you know it, i get and i get it too you know you feel like you're missing something yeah 100 you, you, i I did you know, it but first. once yeah but once you like get in used the flow it. of it and you're used i replaced to it. it with other shit i replaced it with lifting weights more and, and now i see the results more I, I i replaced it with doing more privates getting in the studio to record more music doing more podcasts so i'm actually having more fun than just going home and fucking getting drunk like i used to bro yeah. it's crazy bro Yeah, but like b- before you give it up there's like a fear yeah because it's been your friend for so long yeah 100 and, and it's been this thing that goes on so so long they you can't even imagine what being without it yeah i remember that i remember there'd be fucking days i'd be sick i'm talking about sick like I, i'm like flam everything i still would drink like it, it was crazy like for no reason i'm coming home on a monday after teaching class i'm about to go to sleep 
let me pour this big ass glass of vodka first. It's, it was crazy. I don't yeah, even that's know. Rough, yeah. I don't know why I was doing it, bro. But honestly, it, it was the best thing I did. Okay, so Mayhem gets to prison to Chino, to and and then you're yeah. going in there thinking four years. And for the, for people that have never been locked up, when you go to locked up, the the mindset is like you never know what's going to go on in there, especially in prison because there's a lot of shit going on in there. And I don't. And Mayhem wasn't PC'd up. No. So mayhem was with the general population, if I'm if I'm assuming yeah, correctly. Yeah, yeah. It was a very interesting. Yeah, you know, it was like that that first day when you get off the bus and go through that whole pro- like process check in. I mean, really, mayhem, really, you, the whole the, process. You have to be with the woods. I don't know how is, much you want me to go into this because it's a very interesting. Like, no, let's know, get the, into the it. California, you know, state penitentiary. Correctional, yeah, correctional. <laughs> you know, it, it. You have to go to. <sighs> First, you have to go to reception, yep. which is this type of like they put you out in the desert in the middle of nowhere and you get classified and, you know, they, they have to do all this administrative. That is the Thunderdome right there. Yeah. Like an everyday fight. People stab. are fighting, stabbing. Every day is like violence. Like I one time, I, you know, you're stuck in a little box and it's the summertime and it's the the cell itself is 100 degrees, like 90 eight degrees inside of there and i just me and, and I, you know i was real heavy i was like 280 pounds because i had just been stuck in another box just gaining weight just eating, eating no movement yeah. like push-ups and squats yeah you can't even move you know yeah. and yeah it was it, that, that was tough and then to be able to go over to reception where you're just boiling hot in a uh little cell all day With and then going out to the yard and then they're shooting gas grenades at you, it, you know. I don't know. Maybe I'm. Not, I haven't really. Did you have any? I haven't really thought this out or even like talked about this out loud. So it's like I don't know. I wish. I wish I could make it funnier for your listeners. No, it's but not. But it's it not ain't a, funny. Yeah, yeah, it's not a funny. No, I mean, funny a lot thing, of funny bro. stuff happened, but, but terrible. Yeah, like funny in the gallows humor yeah. type way where. Uh, but that's why I think people want to hear too, bro. Is like kind of what you went through in those two years. Like going to prison is no fucking joke. Like I've been to the county, and the county is is one thing, and and it's cool. And it like, but well, when you get to prison, you're talking about people that are doing some real time there. Yeah, you yeah. Know, you're running to dudes who, are, you know, you they're know. going away for life. Yeah, yeah. So you like see that you get to you see you the real criminals in there. You talk <laughs> to them, and they like they know yeah. they fucked up, and they know that this is it. You yeah. know, and so. The fucks are not given. Like yeah. those guys just don't even care. So yeah, there's so a lot of dangerous. Crazy. Thing. Reception was real wild. You know, it was like pff, how like, long? How long were you there for? Three months. Three months. Uh, three whole months. Or yeah, three Did months. Did you have a celly or were you in? I had dorm? a celly. Big fat guy. Nice, nice kid. He was like there on his like fifth DUI. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, and he. I know. I was like, bro, you got to get it together. Like, what fucking the get an Uber. Man, yeah. I know. So I'm saying <laughs> they got taxis now and, everywhere. And he, he was a nice kid. But he was a a fat, a fat guy. He was like, he just kept going. Uh, it's so hot. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know it's hot, bro. I'm sitting here right now too. Yeah, it's hot. Quit saying it's yeah, hot. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, and like you know. Crazy things happened, like a lot of politics in the in the reception. Yes, yeah. Like immediately, you realize, like, okay, this is a new world. Can't sit with the blacks. Can't talk to the Mexicans. Really, it's like a weird. I don't know. You know. Yeah. It can't just, it can't may, shit in the same toilet. Yeah. Can't may, pee in the same place. Can't shower in the same stuff. Can't trade. A lot of politics. A lot of politics. Yeah. You immediately uh, that 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 was I. You see that in right when you get to jail, but it's even more. Uh, structured when you get into prison. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a very strange adjustment. You know, you have to, like, um, learn all these weird little rules. And it's just And if you don't, like, nightmare, just so nightmare. you guys know, if you don't do, if you don't follow rules, I don't care. Mayhem's a, a, been a UFC fighter, one of the best in the world. He knows that when you get in there, you don't go against, you know. Well, look, I, I would have liked to, like, gone in there and just change the system from the inside. <laughs> but I realized very quickly that, no, that's not how you do. No. So I just kept it cool. Like, yeah. I, I, you know, and again, the thing from guys knowing that I fight and knowing that, you know, knowing who I was, it made me be able to, like, flex the rules a little more than the average white boy. But still, it, I had to, like, fall in line because yeah. even the cops are on that same they're on that same 
program. Yeah, one hundred percent. They, you know what I mean. Like the, uh, you have a they know the white program. representative. Yeah, you have a black representative. You have a South Side representative that talks to to the cops. You don't talk to the cops directly. Right. It's a really um, regimented type structured. Yep. Structure. It's it's strange. And it's if really and, strange. and for example, if someone doesn't follow one of the rules from that from that race, what well, what what happens to them? Look, that we pack them out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's some white guy doing the pack them out means beat your motherfucking ass. Yeah. <laughs> and get you yeah, up out of there. Shame, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. You know, and and I, I it's really like. It's, it's tough this, to this see. disgusting. Yeah. To to like because usually it, it's not like there's guys that are, you know, going against the grain on purpose. Basically what you're doing is beating up the mentally disabled. Yeah. Like people who are, are like too dumb yeah. to follow the rule. They don't even understand. And it's not even their fault. Yeah. Like they're brain injured already or they're some type of like, you know, developmentally disabled. And and it's really it's disgusting. Yeah. The cops let it happen. Yeah. The, the, you know, the, I don't know. They, there's, they ain't no Netflix in there. Nope. So it's entertaining. Like, that's what they, that's what people do is yeah. like, they go get two little kids to beat up a big guy that's, you know, that he'd been on a one yard before. Yeah. So they think he's a snitch or they say he's a chomo or they, they just make up a reason. Yeah. Just yeah. to beat somebody up. So they just, yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it's sick. It's disgusting. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it really makes me sad that, but, you know, it ain't, it ain't a nice place. That's the way. It ain't a nice know, place. That, you know, the your, argument is. What up, everybody? Want to take a quick second out of the podcast just to give a shout out to our sponsor, the best criminal defense attorney I know. The last time I got in trouble, I needed somebody that was going to look into my case and actually fight for me and give me the best deal possible. And he did that. And I'll make sure that he does that for you. Make sure you shout me out if you guys reach out to him. They're the sponsor of the convo. You know anybody, a family member or yourself that make a mistake, you want somebody like him on your side. Arash, please let everybody know how they can get a hold of you. Thank you. Arash Hashemi, 310-448-1529 or HashemiLaw.com, H-A-S-H-E-M-I-L-A-W.com or just Google hashtag better call hash. Remember that, better call hash. You'll find me on every social media channel all over the internet. 310-448-1529. You better call hash. Don't do it. Exactly. Don't, don't go, yeah, don't don't go there. there. Don't be yeah, there. But, <laughs> but, you know, I, a lot, you know, it, if you make bad decisions, you can get jammed you, up in there. Did you? Yeah. Did anything happen to you in the reception? Not in reception. In reception, the craziest thing was a way across the yard. Some guy who was like a snitch that they were saying, I, "We are." You can tell when something's gonna go down <laughs> and from your pod. You know, because everybody's like, are you sure "Yeah, you everyone's on alert, whispering yeah, 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 yeah. and like yeah. you're like, what is going on?" Yeah. And then so you ask, "Hey, what's going on?" And then they like don't say nothing. But and everybody is saying something, <laughs> so it's like an open secret, <laughs> and everybody's looking at one guy. So, and even the guy who's going to get smashed out, he knows too. Yeah, yeah. but you, you know, feel yeah, it coming. he knows, he knows something's <laughs> up, if, yeah. unless he's completely dumb. Yeah. But like uh, way across the yard, the, the, the <laughs> this white guy, I guess he snitched somebody out, and they just were started smashing him. And I was on the pull up bar, like trying to get some workout in. And I look over like, oh, damn, it's starting. And I'm like, great, we're going to have to, this is going to screw my workout out. And, you know, <laughs> screw screw up my workout. And I, I look across. And then right next to me on the pull-up bar, so this black kid starts taking off on this other black kid. And I'm like, oh, man, great. <laughs> and so the cops that were going over to gas grenade those guys over there shoot a gas grenade right at me <laughs> it lands right between my legs oh, i had God. to jump out of the way like arnold schwarzenegger in true lies i was like ah and man it, luckily it didn't i mean it was bad it like but and i'm coughing and sneezing and yeah, those things blurred are oh my god that was a nightmare <laughs> yeah that was a nightmare and but you know that was like one of the you know, that was, that was light was, anecdotes. Yeah, there was yeah. other ones that I, I'm not going to stress the audience. Yeah. Yeah. About, so you, know, you so that you, was funny. Like yeah. that was like, huh? Yeah. well, I almost got my dick shot off with the damn <laughs> gas grenade, but you know, everybody, um, you know, there, there was a lot worse yeah. things. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of bad, a lot of dark shit in there, man. A lot of, a lot of crazy shit. Too. I remember when I, I never made it to the penitentiary. Thank God. I didn't thank get, God. I didn't get that deep into it. I, I was able to pull myself out of that. But I remember one day uh, I, I was sitting in, this was in Theo Lacey and they came around to the dorms and we were in the dorms. So it's kind of like structured everywhere. Like 
you know, 12 people in these little small queues, but it's a big ass place. Yep. And uh, I remember this, the, the, one of the shot callers started coming around to the cube saying, hey, guys, we got a child molester in here. You guys all yep. just stay on your bunks. And I was like, oh, shit. And this is the first time I seen this. This was like well, the first time I did a year. And uh, I remember, bro, you could just hear it like for and like almost for like three minutes, bro. Just like just nonstop, dude. And then. You hear the alarm go off, and then I, I like, look out the corner, and I see this dude, like, he can, like, he's, like, barely walking, covered from head to toe in blood, and just walking out to the damn room with his stuff. It was fucking crazy, bro. And I heard he died later on that night from uh, brain hemorrhage. So it's, yeah, like, and that was just in, that was just in OCJ, so I can only imagine the, sh the other shit you saw, you know, doing yeah. the rest of your time. Yeah. If you had to think about, like, to sum up your two full years in prison, what what was the what was the outcome? Well, what, get along and like go along, work on yourself. You know, this is like were you able you have to, to have a job time. in there? Yeah, I was the friggin' gym coordinator. There you uh, go. Uh, finally, I worked my way up to the gym <laughs> coordinator where I was like, I had to like run the basketball tournaments. Oh my god, bro! <laughs> you never seen a mosh pit like that. <laughs> you know, I, I like I ref calling fouls on like vicious criminals is pretty hilarious like you know what i mean yeah. like like to be like nah that's a foul and then the guy gets in your face you have to be ready to fight the whole time and i was you know what i mean i'm ready to throw my clipboard on the ground and Hell go yeah. so they knew that so that no there was no drama if i called a foul then everybody accepted it, it you know and but yeah it was it, it was wild man and you know uh, got to work out all, all the time made a couple friends kind of i'm sure inside there <laughs> but yeah and I mean, no, no, none. Not I mean, even. you got to have one guy that you conversate well, yeah. with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe I mean, not necessarily on the outside, but at least while you're in there to keep oh, yeah. to help you pass yeah, the time. Of course, and shit, yeah, you know, you yeah. When my, uh, yeah, the 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 dude that I was the uh, my coworker at the gym was uh, you know a NCAA basketball star who like killed some dude in a road wow. rage. I got I knocked the dude out. And, and he hit his head on the ground during the road rage inc incident. Damn. So let that be a lesson to you guys. Yeah. Don't don't get in no road rage. You're like nope. it's just stupid. And um, yeah, he done a bunch of time. And um, you know, he it was good to have a training partner. But again, a black guy, brother, a yeah. white guy, so we can be friends but in the only office. So much. Yeah, yeah. But then on the yard, we can we we work out like but you know together, have but not together yeah you know? but still having a, a somebody in there that you, you know can conversate with and that you you can chop it up with and like well, it well, helps the you, interesting it helps thing the interesting thing was that uh because uh i had worked my way up to um being a, a dog trainer like that was a very that was a huge you know like uh, they kind of pick guys out of the pods like i you know initially i was in the um barracks type yeah. place where you're all in one big room and that was a nightmare yeah I was, that was like uh that was like tough dude yeah. because you know it's a lot of drugs get through yeah so dudes are just all tweaked out all day and yep. night and like you know i was like lived in a shop like a tattoo shop where like two different white boys like <laughs> in my area were just tattooing guys oh, all day fuck. just like <laughs> doing speed and like Tattooing, tattooing, tattooing all day, all, day, all, all, day, night. all <laughs> night. I seen like Fuck 15 that. different birthdays get tattooed <laughs> on guys. Like they're just constant string yeah, of these, that. all these dudes trying to look like, uh, you know, uh, cartel members. Yeah. And um, <laughs> it, it, it was, uh, yeah, that was tough. But then I, you know, I worked my way up and they realized I was smart. I was an ADA worker, which is, you know, like uh, helping like disabled guys. So like guys who like got no legs or and you got, stayed like, uh, and, and so. while, while you were in there you stayed completely clean as well yeah, and that's, I mean, that that was good, good time sometimes even though like you know it's a long time out of your life brother I think like it might have been well the thing is I don't do speed so it's like do I need all but, this yeah but you know it's like a very um I don't know I uh, I don't know what the legal ramifications of what I would say are for myself or anybody else so I'll just kind of hang back on that question yeah <laughs> but uh the um uh, i don't know that when i got to the dog training that was like uh being in you know like honors classes in okay. high school because it was like the smart guys were all there the people who were like good programmers that didn't cause no trouble or whatever and 
even though it was like difficult to like live this like you know you got your own cell yeah and you know that's and a little great. place that's, that's huge that's huge because you kind of feel like a human yeah. again yeah yeah you know and uh you know the, you got to share the cell with the dog sometime but that's cool the that's dogs are bad. awesome yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh it was interesting uh, that that part uh, you, it was very uh, fulfilling because you knew you were helping this dog that was going to help some veterans that yeah you know ptsd type dogs you know or, or service animals for somebody eventually they'll teach them uh, uh to be a seeing eye dog or you know that we did the initial training so it's kind of like coaching jujitsu a little bit where you have to like get these guys up on their basic techniques yeah and you know but they're dogs yeah. so you have to like it, it was really great it was yeah. really so you had something to keep you occupied and and keep you busy and, and your time and a mission yeah. and like uh something to um uh, strive towards that felt bigger than you oh and yeah so it, it was it was more fulfilling oh yeah than, oh than, yeah than just doing your time uh, you know a, a lot of people didn't they didn't want to you know a lot of guys they fall into this life they they prison life they don't want to do anything really. They they w just want to only do drugs and that's it. They don't have even anything else. Any goals outside but, of that? Yeah, and it's, it's sad, you know. Yeah. It, it, it's sad, and I think that America would be very um, <clears throat> like better served that if instead of you know I talked about earlier the jail thing where you just go to jail and you feel like crap and then you get out and do more drugs because you feel like crap and then you go back to jail. And then you you know get like I seen guys get into drug debt in jail in jail oh yeah well, you know, all the time you know, and get yeah. stabbed and and killed behind it yeah okay yep but so instead of this they 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 forced you to be a human in jail like you know what I mean set it up where you were doing something you were learning something and I know some uh, I think it would definitely reduce recidivism if they were to make jail more uh focused on rehabilitation instead of just warehousing and making money off commissary you're 100 right i bro. mean but you know is it gonna happen nope uh, well i mean Hopefully. i think i think that <laughs> it can happen i, I believe that a, a lot of people are now getting awareness about this because like guys like you doing you know shows about this or you know the the culture it, it it's on it's on tv yeah like i, I couldn't believe when I got out of prison, I, I looked at the TV and there's like love after lockup. There's like all these weird shows that show the prison 30 stories. days in. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? Prison there's all stories, these weird shows. People from that prison. Now with people podcasts. are getting it. And yeah. so the populace is getting hip to the fact that America is busting our favorite kind of a consumerism, but using people who are locked up. Yeah. Like that's, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a business. <laughs> yeah. And so people are getting smart to that and going, hey, wait a minute. If this is the business, like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know why that uh, we have to reduce everything to capital gains, you know, like to some type of, uh, I just, I guess it's the, the com, like, uh, what is it? Communism, capitalism or something? I don't something know. Something like that. Something like this <laughs> where, where they, they're making all the money yeah. off, off of um each individual prisoner like the best way you can make money is to have a good government contract you know and i i never i i never seen so many hot cheetos eaten in my life <laughs> you know? hot cheetos like, and top ramen yeah, did you making, eat a lot of top ramen making, hell no they're, <laughs> they're making a bowl i never ate ramen you I, never I had mean, no spread of course i had, you spread, had to have a spread but they're like fucking good but too. yeah but after i blew up to 280 <laughs> pounds I realized that, dude, that's a, not the way to spreads. live. That's not the way to live. My yeah, blood pressure is like through the roof. I can see my, you know what I mean? My oh, blood shit. in my head just pounding. I, but I got to say this, though. if For you guys that have never been to jail or ever been locked up, you got to have at least one spread just oh, to do it. It's, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. It makes me sick to even think about, uh, what is it? What is it? Uh, Top ramen, ramen noodles. Cheetos. With, uh, Cheetos on top of it. It's, uh, another layer of Doritos. Like, yeah. This disgusting <laughs> not cheese spread on top of that and then another layer of 
dried beans. Beans, like, yeah, yeah, horrible, like, man. Man, it just you know, you, you, there's easier ways <laughs> to kill yourself. Yeah, yeah, bro. I remember, I remember that was the thing, right? And birthdays would come around. In, in listen, <laughs> all right, I'm, you know what? I, I'm wrong. I did eat, but I did eat. Okay, see yeah. birthdays because they, it's like they, you, I, I, and they make cakes and shit too. You'd be cakes, surprised. Cakes, I know. <laughs> like, I like. Yeah, the honey I, buns I, and shit. Re, you know, that's what really <laughs> amazed me about jail and prison is that <laughs> so the, the fact people that people, the, yeah, the fact that people would just MacGyver out some <laughs> crazy ass delicious stuff, yeah, like yeah. out of the worst ingredients. Yeah. Then I, I, I get it. I get it. Yep, like those dudes would put half the effort into their outside life. They would be one hundred percent. One hundred percent. Not everybody that's in jail deserves to be there, and not everybody in jail uh, should be there forever. And and hopefully the people that are caught in that lifestyle can find a way out. So my brother, let's bring us up to date. So Jason gets out of you get out of prison after serving your two years. Time's yeah. up. No, and then but like I w I wasn't I wasn't right after that. I wasn't right. It was like again the the prison experience. Yeah, I might talking all rosy and stuff, but it was hard. Yeah, and it was like. It's not past. Painf it was painful. Yeah. You know, and so I fell back into drinking and whatever. And then I finally just sacked up and said, no, I'm going to rehab. I need to like work through all this stuff Which that I went Which rehab did through. you end up going to? Oh, man. I went to like, oh, man, Pacifica House. It's a famous rehab, but it's like not rich guy rehab. I went to rich guy rehab a million years ago, but I wasn't even trying. Like yeah. I was like just trying to. Get Just the, pr get the jail there. sentence, yeah. to, like get that wiped off and go and hang out at a nice house and, you know what I mean? Like just bide my time. This one, I went there like the star student. Like I was like, I'm trying to get it done. Like like every panel or, or every, um, you know, was, I, I took it to back to like jujitsu. Like, okay, I'm going to, I couldn't understand. How do you go to learn to not do something? And so I kind of like gave up before. Like, that's not, that's stupid. That's, you just don't do it. Yeah. But that's not how it is. You have to talk to people who who have done it 100%. and have figured it out. I've been through it. That way you can get the techniques. Yes. Like how to like, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll share with you guys like a, a little bit of stuff. Like to realize, like a big thing is to realize like a craving or an anxiety that would normally push you to drink. Or, or do whatever drug you like uh, is, is is just a craving. It's just a thought. And you don't have to acquiesce to this. You can you can shift your focus. And that's the hardest thing is to, especially, you know, if you like to drink, buddy, 7-Eleven is everywhere. You can go get a beer anywhere and that will start up a big cycle. And if you don't think that, oh, yeah, uh, one beer is uh, no big, if you think, oh, one beer is no problem, well, then, buddy, you're it's wrong. not the one beer it's the 12th beer yeah and it's the next week yeah the way you've been drinking all the time and then your life is in shambles, already, yeah man. i already know bro and so, I, I agree 100 percent. so I, but like you have to learn this direction like you have to like uh get on a off ramp before you make the actual physical choice yeah to to do this behavior and, and it's difficult like it, it, you have to get used to the the, the best thing was that i went to the facility where you cannot leave you can't you know you're you're stuck in there in-house so that that's real treatment because i needed some time yeah to get used to being just normal yeah with nothing nothing, with nothing helping yeah. not yeah and and you know if not if you're like outpatient and you know drinking a little here and yeah 100 no. then then you're never going to get in never. the habit yep. you know that's great, bro. And so now you've been, you went to rehab and you've, you completed the rehab yeah, completely. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and now like, now it's like maintenance. Now it's like, okay, you know, I, I go to uh, secret meetings yeah. and like, you know, go like, I'll check in with people. And, and really the big thing is like, you know, talking, like yeah. talking, like this is a perfect thing that keeps me motivated to 100%. stay in this zone. And, uh, you know, it's not, it's not easy. It's not yeah. like 
you know, oh, that's all behind me. And no, it's no, not. you have to be vigilant yeah. and constantly like uh, update your software. One hundred percent, because there's the, there's another way where it can grab you. Yeah, you don't want to get caught up in that life. One hundred percent. Yeah, I believe a lot of it has to do with the people that you're around, and that's why I like I, I know like I probably got a little I got probably a little annoying to Mayhem when he when I first got noticed that he was like around again. And I, oh, you I were kept, jazzed up, bro. You <laughs> text was, me more than anybody. Yeah. I appreciate it though. You know I what? You know what though? But I, I, I felt bad that I didn't get. Like uh, <laughs> right, right out immediately, and uh, you know, no, no, I'm, 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 I'm glad it went like this because, but for me, it was more important. Like I was so happy when I saw you do the the fighter uh, and the kid podcast, bro. Yeah. I literally like I was about to exit the house and I saw it on my thing. I was like, fuck that, and I laid down. I put it on the TV and I and I lay down, and watched the whole show, and it was like it was so refreshing to see the the new you, yeah. like the way you looked, the way you talked. It's like yeah. it's like the real mayhem is here, and well, and man, I got caught up in the thing like when you have a lot of like dude like i remember when i did like the the infamous hbo interview right uh or i think it was right and uh see you just see me acting buck wild crazy you know and they edited me to make me look even crazier <laughs> but i had some valid gripes like i was really pissed that the ufc fucked me on the damn knee yeah. surgery like what the hell? Yeah. Like, buddy, I I was healthy enough to go in there, yeah. but it's a pre-existing condition. When I get out of there, oh, you already you're already, come on, bud. Yeah. Like you you bought me how you bought me. Yeah. You know what I mean? As is. Yeah. So at least help me out, so yeah. I don't have to sell my stuff. And you brought to, a lot of to, fucking value to the UFC, bro. Yeah, like you but were, you know, at the time they brought you, listen, they, the, the Ultimate Fighter, they needed someone like you, buddy. Bro. They they pulled a you know you know listen that's business. You yep. know what I mean? Like all right, well they I they they, they you know. I'm sure that they're the uh, MMA fans. They already know. They like the, already know. The 100%. hardcore, the real ones. The casuals know. don't really don't really realize that how much of a lock that they, they've had on yep. the sport yep. forever. Yep. You know, but it's coming out, and I, that's all I'll say about that. But the um, but now, bro, like now that this is behind you. No, but I was saying this HBO interview. Okay, they just see me being crazy, but I like. Three girls that were all like, hey, yay, mayhem, yeah. And I, I just, you know what I mean? Like a tyrant king that was like, they were like, give me wine between takes. Winding and, you up. Yeah, Winding they're just like, crank me up. Like, yeah. it's it's super hard to not be a psycho when everyone's going, psycho, psycho. <laughs> we love the psycho. It's go. hard. It's yeah, hard. Yeah. But now it's good. I got like, I got a, a big group of people. It texts me like positive, like, yeah, we, we're so Thank happy. You. <laughs> You're all together. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the thing was, I like, you know, and I feel bad. I cussed Boss Root now. I, I flipped Boss Root and I flipped off the whole, that that to me, like uh, I was doing, I was so angry at the MMA world for like screwing me over, sort of like I was so mad that that happened that I was just expressing my anger because they sent a damn, they sent a limo to get me with a bottle of whiskey in it. And I just drank the whole <laughs> bottle of whiskey. Oh, I was like, All right, I'm going to tell you guys how I really feel. <laughs> and I, you know, I did. So oh, really? I went, I went on a damn tear, wrecking my whole life, you know, even worse than it was because, you know, I was mad. I yeah. was mad. And yeah. it was, I had nowhere to put this anger. Yeah. And, you know, got smarter. Yeah. Uh, after a while, got smarter. Yeah, and now, yeah. now that now that this is like behind you, bro. Like you know, I think I think now is the time. You know, that's why I've been I've, I've been telling you myself, like, ma'am, you got to be behind the camera, bro. You got to be doing something. Like whether it's your own podcast, whether you know, I even told him I was like, man, I'll do one with you. I'll, oh, I'll here's be your the co-host. thing: it's an Let's do some fight time, picks. Yeah. It's an like, interesting we need, time. We need. I I know I, as a fan of mixed martial arts and as somebody that's I consider myself hardcore and I train too as well. Like, dude, I need I need that in my life. I need to hear from Mayhem. I need to laugh because what you do, bro, not many people can do. Like when I saw you. You, like on the fight, fighter and the kid like yeah those guys are funny but you are the one that makes people laugh bro you you know you got that humor so we need more of that and so like that that's been my main thing like get you behind the, the the camera because that's where we need you we need to see you shine again bro and and i think we need more of that in the mma community you, you know what i mean oh no, yeah i'm seeing where i fit in right now yeah like i i, I but it's all brand new world. Yeah. Like to me, like I, I, I kind of like, I said it was going to happen this way, but now that it, it is happening, I'm shocked. Like, I'm like, what the hell? It did happen. I, <laughs> I, I wasn't sure that I was going to be right about all this, but this is exactly like, this is how it goes. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, like YouTube, I 
the reason I was on Bully Beatdown is YouTube. I made up YouTube videos. I saw the power of that. Now everybody's on YouTube. It's 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 pretty dope. And I don't know. I don't know which direction my life's gonna go. I, I hope that I can be of service to somebody out there somewhere and hope to build something big. Uh, Which once is again. gonna happen. And and, and you now keep doing but, what you're doing. See, but I was so caught up in this rock star lifestyle that I didn't. I didn't even care. I already. In my mind, I had already kind of got what I want. Uh, I can drink whenever I want. I can do whatever mm -hmm. I want. And, like, it didn't work out. It <laughs> didn't work out. Th those goals were too small. Yeah. To just uh, be happy and to have, uh, like, um, I don't know, just this uh, exciting on the surface life, it, it didn't. It wasn't fulfilling. Yeah. So now 100%. I'm looking. Yeah, and I don't know where it's going to go. Like, every day I wake up and go, huh. What the hell is going to happen now? It, well, you and, know, and you know, it's so far it's working out. Yeah, yeah and and I, every, I can see that there's a lot of people behind you, a lot of support pouring out, bro. And I can only see big things happen for you. And you know, one one of the things that I believe the keys to life is love and laughter. And one of the main things about you, bro, that a lot of people love about you is that you bring love and laughter, and and you can make anybody laugh, bro. And that's what we all need. We need more of that. So you know, your presence is much needed. And, you know, he might not have anything going yet, but we're going to have something going soon. I know it. And then well, on top I of do that, have one thing going. Manuka honey, samumanuka.com backslash mayhem. And I'll write you a letter about it. Would you chop it up with Ariel Hawani again? I mean, why not? Yeah, but I don't really got nothing to talk to him about right now. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see yeah. what happens. You know, yeah. let's see those what happens. Those hey, were the fun. sport <laughs> is like expanded. Yeah. And it, things are getting even bigger and crazier and you know and i uh, you know like steve-o's at the damn fights like thank god like and all like, these people know you bro so that's the that's the beautiful thing you guys reach out to to jason mayhem miller and you guys want him to get get him on a podcast you're also teaching uh brazilian jiu-jitsu coaching guy i'm coaching mixed kids martial arts. yeah mixed martial arts well jiu-jitsu jiu I, I coach them and, jiu i coach some of the kids i coach some of the adults uh but like it, it, it's awesome. It's fulfilling. I, you know, it's not where like are a, you, where are you teaching at uh, right now? Right now, up in uh, Sunland, uh, Sunland in, in, Fight uh, Club. Sunland, is that what it's Sunland called? Sunland Fighting Club. Yeah, that, and uh, man, it's great. It's a great community up there. And you know, I, I don't know. I, I'm just right now. I'm just over there getting in shape. Yeah, I, I I've been uh, working with the MVP, which is the Merging Veterans and Players, which is uh, kind of a, a I don't want to call them a charity, more of an organization. Because charity would be like, ah, uh, these these guys need help. It's like a brotherhood and sisterhood of um, military and professional athletes that you know we train on Wednesdays at um, Unbreakable Gym in Hollywood, and and it's a very good like community where Jake everybody's Lazer's building, gym. yeah, everybody's yeah. building things up, uh, building each other up, and 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 it's one of those things where uh, veterans, you know, it's kind of. Um, one of those things where like it's sad that america kind of doesn't do everything they can to for, for those guys yeah. that they gave their life to, to the military 100 percent. you know so it, it kind of just that that gap that they need to that needs to be filled there's like a gap there where guys probably don't get the brotherhood or sisterhood that they that they need, that they need and and mvp is there to fill it it's it's oh, yeah. really i'm really proud to be a part a part of that organization like th those guys are awesome man. hell yeah bro so jason you know i want to say like i want to have you back here thank you so much for coming here God today bless you, brother. you know yeah. it, meant, it really meant a lot to me bro Thanks, I, I don't know if you know but this this oh, was, man i this was i, really I wish you continued success man and looks like you got a great thing going and i hope you do really thank i hope you. this thing blows up thank man. you brother and and you know what i want to i will you guys we will have jason back i will keep bugging him till we have back and hopefully i can get him to do something with me like a, a dual youtube maybe we we'll do some fight picture together let us know what you guys want to see guys reach out to jason mayhem miller mayhem what's your instagram for people that can get a hold of you is it mayhem miller as usual mayhem miller is the one with the blue check on instagram guys it's been an honor today for me a legend Thank you, a living legend god bless real you. talk brother and you guys remember look i've been through it he's been through it addiction jail it doesn't hold you back only if you let it make the changes in your life and start to do positive things and you will see positive results. I hope this makes somebody out there touched and inspired to do good. And once again, thank you.
Jason Mayhem Miller. God bless you, Bob. Thank you, man. Like. And we out. Subscribe. Tell your mama and your daddy. Peace.